In this video, I'm going to explain the difference between mono and stereo sound and provide some audio example comparisons along the way. Hello, my name is Charles Hoffman. If you're interested in music production tutorials and gear roundups, consider subscribing to the Black Ghost Audio YouTube channel. The difference between monophonic and stereophonic sound, or mono and stereo sound, is the number of channels used to record and playback audio. Mono signals can be recorded and played back using a single audio channel, while stereo signals need to be recorded and played back using two audio channels. As a listener, the most noticeable difference is that stereo sounds are capable of producing the perception of width, whereas mono sounds are not. To hear the difference between mono and stereo sound, you'll need to listen to this video using a pair of earbuds, headphones, or studio monitors. If you choose to use studio monitors, your speakers should be angled about 45 degrees toward you. Make sure that you position the back of your head in an equilateral triangle with the speakers. This will ensure that you perceive stereo sound as intended. I've included a few affiliate links to products mentioned in this video in the description down below. If you make a purchase after clicking one of these links, Black Coast Audio will earn a bit of money to make more helpful content just like this. Playback systems that make use of two speakers are referred to as stereo systems. Stereo audio files, such as stereo MP3 and WAV files, contain left channel and right channel information that tell the left and right speaker when to push and pull air. If you've ever looked at the waveform of a stereo audio file within a digital audio workstation, you've likely noticed that there are two waveforms a part of the file. Each waveform represents a single channel of audio. When looking at a mono audio file, you'll notice that it only contains a single audio channel. Stereo systems are capable of creating the impression of sound source localization. Sound source localization refers to the human ability to locate the position of a sound source within a space. For example, if you hear a dog barking, it's pretty easy to determine the direction the sound is coming from and how far away the sound source is. In this example, the sound source is the dog. Most people should be able to localize sounds with decent accuracy, even with their eyes closed. It makes sense to assume that you perceive the sound produced by a stereo system to come from two distinct sound sources, the left and right speaker. In some situations, you will perceive sound coming from two different directions, but this isn't always the case. The human brain is easy to trick because it uses simple concepts to localize sounds. These concepts include timing differences between sounds reaching your left and right ear, sound wave frequencies, sound wave pressure levels, dynamic range, and reverberation amount. Stereo systems exploit how gullible your brain is to create the impression of sound source localization between the system's left and right speaker. A sound source closer to your left ear will produce sound waves that reach your left ear before reaching your right ear. Even though these timing differences are small, they help your brain localize the sound. When you mirror this process using a second speaker and feed both speakers the same signal, each ear hears the exact same thing coming from two different directions, but your brain doesn't perceive two distinct sound sources. Instead of perceiving two sounds coming from different directions, you'll perceive a single sound located in front of you. This is referred to as a phantom mono sound source, because the true sound sources, which are the speakers, are positioned out to the sides. In nature, when a sound source produces a sound in front of you, the sound waves it produces reach your left ear and right ear at exactly the same time. As differences are introduced to one of the signals, the sound they produce will be perceived as wider, but still centered. When enough variation has been introduced, the listener's echo threshold is broken, and the phantom mono sound source will tear apart into two distinct sounds coming from two different directions. In the following audio example, a gradually growing delay has been added to the right channel. Centuries are feeling down, but today I hide. When you're lying on the ground, all you do is hide. Width is just one of the three dimensions you're capable of perceiving through the use of a stereo system. The other dimensions include height and depth. Altogether, these three dimensions form a 3D space known as a stereo field. David Gibson's book, The Art of Mixing, does a great job of visualizing stereo imaging. I've linked to a video in the description down below that demonstrates how track elements have been positioned within the stereo field of different songs using visual elements from the art of mixing. Frequency dictates the height at which you perceive sound within a stereo field. High frequency sounds localize themselves above low frequency sounds. For example, the hi-hats in a song will sound as though they're positioned above the bass guitar. Depth is affected by a sound's relative level, dynamic range, and reverberation amount. Sounds with a weak level and less dynamic range tend to appear toward the back of the stereo field, and so do sounds containing lots of reverb. Mono playback systems use one speaker and can only produce a two-dimensional image consisting of height and depth. Two speakers spaced apart from 
from one another are required to create the perception of width. Many cell phones now come with two speakers built into them and boast the ability to produce stereo sound. It's true that they can do this, but since cell phones aren't generally that big, the built-in speakers are never that far apart, so the stereo image they produce will be quite narrow. When you record a sound source using a single microphone, you capture a single channel of audio. Playing back a mono recording like this can be achieved using a single speaker or pair of speakers. Mono sounds that are played back via the use of a stereo system will play back in dual mono. The single channel of audio is duplicated and sent to both the left and right speaker. To capture true stereo recordings, you need to use two microphones. When you process a stereo recording, you'll need to pan one of the microphone recordings to the left and the other to the right. The following audio example contains a back-to-back -back comparison of a mono guitar recording and stereo guitar recording. The stereo microphone technique being used is called the XY technique, and it tends to produce a moderately wide stereo image that is also mono compatible. You can achieve an even wider stereo image by angling the microphones outward further or by using different acoustic guitar recording techniques. Many handheld recorders provide the ability to record in stereo, capturing sound using a pair of built-in microphones. Information captured by the left microphone is saved to the left channel of the saved audio file, while information captured by the right microphone is saved to the right channel. For example, the Zoom H4n Pro contains two microphones and allows you to record in stereo. If you like this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button and also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Black Ghost Audio. In the comment section down below, you'll find a link to enter our giveaways. We give away tons of music production software and hardware, so it's definitely something you should check out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Dr. Cross.